Jewish virgin named Mary was chosen by God to give birth to the Savior of the world and that her son's conception would be divine, not mortal, a virgin birth. The Bible gives little detail on Mary's life before or after Jesus is born. But more than a century before the New Testament was canonized, a manuscript bearing the unlikely name, the Protovangelion of James, was written. This book purports to offer those details of Mary's life missing from the Gospel stories. Of course, the story really is about Mary, and it is often viewed as the first document that focuses attention on Mary which becomes in the tradition of the church then a deep interest in Mary and her personhood and her status. Why would this popular book have been excluded from the New Testament? Hard to find a position to put this actually in the New Testament. It would have to be the first thing in the New Testament. And that might make Mary almost more important than Jesus would take you a long time to get to Jesus. And so I imagine if anyone really thought about it particularly and said, why, why not? That might have been the reason. If you want to get to Jesus a little faster. The Protovangelion begins with Mary's middle-aged parents, Joachim and his barren wife, Anna. For years, they prayed desperately for a miracle, asking God to grant them a child. It is when Anna finally gives up that prayer is answered. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, saying unto her, Anna, Anna, the Lord hath hearkened unto thy prayer, and thou shalt conceive and bear, and thy seed shall be spoken of in the whole world. And Anna said to her husband, Now I know the Lord has blessed me very greatly, for behold, she who is barren, has conceived. Some early theologians believed Mary's own conception was miraculous, for Mary's mother Anna was said to be barren. According to their point of view, this proves that Mary herself was born without the stain of original sin. Original sin was a blemish borne by all humanity, reaching back in time to Adam and Eve's fall from grace in the Garden of Eden. While it is commonly accepted that Jesus was conceived and born without original sin, it was his mother Mary and not Jesus himself who became known to Catholics worldwide as the Immaculate Conception. By the fourth century, the Roman Catholic Church further expanded this idea, saying Mary remained a virgin throughout her life. Yet, the Bible also reports the existence of Mary's four other sons and a number of unnamed daughters. And thus, for some Christian believers, the question of Mary's perpetual virginity became a problem. There was a, a problem in accepting the perpetu perpetual virginity of Mary because in the text of Mark especially, and also in Matthew, who follows Mark rather closely, the brothers and sisters of Jesus are mentioned. The idea of the perpetual virginity of Mary is the idea that Mary, as far as the church is concerned, both east and west, was a pure vessel chosen by God to reveal himself through the Holy Spirit in human flesh. The Eastern Church calls her Theotokos, which means the God-bearer. God-bearer meaning that she bore God in the flesh in her womb, it was a pure vessel. This would prove to be such an important idea that the Protovangelion's author may have attributed his book to one of the most highly respected early Christian leaders, James, a man who was stoned to death almost 100 years before the book was written. The Protovangelion of James assumes that the author of this document is the man we know from the early church as James the Just, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church after Peter. This James was a brother or half-brother or cousin of Jesus, depending on your theological perspective. It was absolutely acceptable in ancient writing, ancient Jewish writings and ancient Christian writings to attribute a work to a renowned 
ancient prophet or apostle. The Proto-Evangelion not only makes a strong case for Mary's own immaculate conception and birth, it also reinforces the idea of Mary's virginal conception of Jesus. Mary becomes pregnant and Joseph is scandalized and of course it's the virginal conception of Jesus that we know of from the canonical Gospels. In this story there is a woman whose name happens to be Salome who has to check things out so pardon me but she actually sticks her finger in Mary to make sure she really is a virgin and so that's established and Joseph is relieved and Jesus is born. In this very graphic description, the Proto-Evangelion of James solves one of the most disputed events in the Christian canon, the virgin birth of Jesus. But what about Mary's celibacy after the birth of Jesus? The New Testament speaks of the Savior's brothers and sisters. Is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joses, and Jude, and Simon, and are not his sisters here? So that created a problem for some Christians who believed that Mary was a perpetual virgin. Therefore, how did they handle it in the hidden book called the Proto-Gospel? They do a search among the widowers in the area to find a holy, pure man who would marry this young woman, and that's how Joseph is found in the story. And so they marry, and he is a widower. He has children in, in the story by his first marriage. And then, of course, the story becomes a little more traditional. By telling us that the brothers and sisters of Jesus mentioned in the Bible belong to Joseph and not Mary, the Proto-Evangelion opened the way for later church leaders to assert Mary's perpetual virginity. It's through the fact that Joseph had in the Proto-Gospel 